Well, hey there, kids. Hope you all doing well. You're sitting there watching this little kids video on your TV or on your computer. I bet you're wondering, who is that? I bet you can't recognize who this is through this amazing disguise. Do you need some clues? Have you figured out who I am by the sound of my voice? Well, all right, maybe you don't need some clues, but if I take off my hat and I take off my awesome mask and I, and I take off my, my coat here, you can know, hey, it's me, it's Brother Billy. I know I had a few of you confused. Some of you may have known it was me. I know a couple of you probably thought it was Miss Campbell. But you know what? Here I am. You knew I'd be here. So even with some different things added to my appearance, you figured out what was going on. Perhaps, though, there are times in life when things aren't quite that obvious. Sometimes we get confused and we get perplexed by what happens to us, and it takes a while to understand what is God doing for us. You know, even in the Bible, people didn't always recognize the signs that God put before them. You know, he sent prophets to explain things that would happen. Even when the signs that they said came true, not everyone understood. You know, after Jesus rose from the dead, he went out and he visited people, but they didn't always know who he was right away. Now, it's possible Jesus might have looked a little bit different than after the resurrection. It's also possible that people weren't necessarily expecting him to be alive, understand what God had done even though Jesus himself had told them what was going to happen. And this is what we're going to be talking about in today's gospel. This is one of my favorite stories in all of the New Testament. It takes place in Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. So if you have your Bibles or your Bible app, whatever you have to read along with God's Word, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 24, and we're going to start in verse 13 and go all the way to verse 35. This is what God's word has to say. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. They're talking about the word that Jesus had been resurrected. Now, while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. And one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it's now the third day since these things happened. Moreover, some women of our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning. And when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. And some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But him they didn't see. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter in his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And so they drew near to the village to which they were going. And he acted as if he was going further. And they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road? while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were gathered there with them, saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. So here we have a couple of disciples. They're walking along the road. They're talking together about how Jesus had been crucified and how some people have said he's raised from the dead. 
And then suddenly, Jesus starts walking with them, but they don't know it's him. And he starts talking with them, and he's kind of acting like he doesn't know what's going on. And they're like, don't you know of all these amazing things that have happened? And Jesus begins to talk with them. He says, don't you know that the scriptures all pointed to Jesus? He goes through and it says it opens up the law and all the prophets. So that means he started talking to them about Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, and those are the law. And then he started talking about the prophets and all the different prophets that God called, and they, they wrote within the Bible and all the different writings, even things in hymns and poems like Psalms pointed to Jesus. And he begins to go through all these scriptures and explain to them how everything that happened in the Old Testament pointed to Jesus. And boy, they got excited. And they went and they invited Jesus to supper with them. And it says, as he broke the bread, they recognized who he was. And then poof, he disappeared. He vanished. And it says they were filled with excitement, enthusiasm. It says their hearts burned within them as the scriptures were explained. And this is the amazing thing, as you read the Bible, as you learn what God wants us to know about him, as you learn how the Bible is about Jesus and about how we can learn from him and walk in his ways, we should get excited about that, about the chance to read God's word. Now, sometimes things in our life are disguised in a way. We don't always recognize or understand the thing that God is doing. We might encounter a difficult situation or a circumstance and feel confused about God. Why would you allow something to happen like this? But we can trust that God is at work. We might still face challenges. We won't always find out right away why we have such trouble in our lives. Maybe we don't understand right now why we can't go to school. Maybe we don't understand why we can't go out and shop like we used to. Maybe we don't understand why we're hearing about so many bad things on the news. We might not ever understand until we get to heaven. But God promises that he is working things for our good. We hold on to the hope that even hard things can bring blessings. We can also cling to the best news of all. Unlike the disciples on the road, we do know the whole story. We know that Jesus came back to life. We have the whole picture in the entire Bible. We know that he was sent by God. We know that he came back to life so that we can have eternal life with him. We can rest assured that our sins are covered because of what Jesus did on the cross. So in the meantime, keep your eyes open for blessings, the good things that God does for us. And we remain in prayer and we read our Bible. We study every day so that we won't miss out on the good things that God does in our lives. We recognize that sometimes God uses other people around us, as well as situations and circumstances, and that he is demonstrating his love, that he's strengthening us even when times are tough. So the Bible teaches us that he is faithful and good. We can gain strength and have hope in him. So let's, everywhere you're at, let's bow our heads and let's close our eyes and let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for what he was willing to do for us. But we also thank you that he didn't stay dead, that he rose again. We thank you for the time that, that he went and spent with these disciples on the road, showing them how everything in Scripture is about Jesus. And I pray that we, just as them, would get excited about reading God's Word, and about understanding God's Word, and putting that into our lives. Lord, I pray that you would be with our kids during this time, that you would bless them, that you would encourage them, and even if they don't understand everything that's going on, we would be able to trust you, God, and as your word says, that we would live out our life by our faith in you. Lord, we trust you, and we love you, and we thank you for this time, for it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
That's so, right, kids. I'm glad you guys were able to join us this week. I want to remind you, you can go over to our website. That's www.mountainhopebaptistal.com. And I got a fun video over there on our website under our children's ministry tab. Some fun crafts that you guys can do this week while you're at home. Hope you have a great week, guys. I look forward to seeing you soon.